to Germany. From Alaska to Puerto Rico. All over the world, the United States Army is on the alert to defend our country, you, the American people, against aggression. This is the big picture. An official television report to the nation from the United States Army. Now, to show you part of the big picture, here is Sergeant Stuart Queen. The United States is a country intensely devoted to sports, to athletics. Nothing gives us more pride than a game fought by the rules of good sportsmanship. We choose to call such sporting events and the players themselves All-American. Your Army has its own extensive sports program, designed to develop within its men the physical fitness and the spirit that characterize all American sportsmanship. How many muscles and how much courage must a man use to cross, sure-footedly, a mountain stream? But quickly, but confidently, and fast enough to win a race against the aim and speed of an enemy's bullet. Pretty hard to put it in terms of particular tendons or specific ligaments. It makes more sense in terms of training. Training, the one thing every boxer and infantryman, every halfback and BAR man has in common. They have to keep fit, stay in shape through constant training. To the athlete, it's the difference between scoring a run, a touchdown, or a decision more or less. To the soldier, it may mean the difference between life and death. Care to try this? No, thank you. Not without the muscles for it. But that takes training, harder than most athletes train. As a matter of fact, a soldier's training is plain hard work. Many sportsmen keep in shape for the fun of it. Not the soldier, it's his job. Only champions train this hard. It's the job of a champion to stay on top. That's work, mister. That's work. Toughen that gut up. Get the lead out and hit the dirt hard. Get down and keep down. Dig in those elbows and knees. They're soft and tender. Train till they're tough. That's your job. But all work and no play, that's no good either. And the Army knows that play is important to the morale and the condition of its men. What kind of play? Of course, the kind that helps them keep in shape while they're having fun. And so, the Army provides the places, the equipment, and the time for its men to participate in practically any sports activity they choose. The Army knows that at the end of a hard day's work, a fast game of volleyball can go far in helping to build a calm, alert, physically fit soldier. The prime objective of Army sports is to give the soldier a chance to sharpen his game, his eye, his agility, his coordination, all qualities which increase combat effectiveness. The Army encourages everyone to turn out and play. Emphasis is placed on making sure the beginner joins in some kind of sports activity. If the men of one platoon play together as a team, they'll soon know how to fight together as a team. And if every soldier turns out for at least one sport, you'll have men with more confidence, esprit de corps, aggressiveness, more of the will to win so essential to a soldier. Yes, the Army's intramural sports program is an all-important phase in the development and maintenance of an effective fighting force. It builds fitness. It builds morale. If you can get them to play. If you can catch their interest. How? First of all, the sports program must be diversified enough to attract all players of all games at all levels of skill. And, of course, like any medicine, the tools of morale building must be on hand to do any good. I remember one time when they seemed to be missing, up on this Korean ridge. We'd been there a long time, cold, waiting, stiff. For entertainment, we ate three times a day, ate and thought about the rest area way back there where we had heard there were clean clothes and swimming and a thing called the sun. One day a deuce and a half came and we rode out of the snow, out of danger, into the sun. Get warm, they said. Get a little rest. Get some clean clothes, a real shower, relax, get the kinks out. 
It felt good to take a quick dip. And what do you know? They had baseball gloves and bats and balls. Even a catcher's mask for the catcher and umpire. It felt better than being at Ebbets Field because I was on the mound pitching, not watching. My arm was loosening up. Steve Reich, he got a piece of the ball. Like old times, I had that ball under control. Speaking of old times, Mighty refreshing to have ice cream during the seventh inning stretch. Just like flappers. Right then and there, I made up my mind to turn out for the division ball club when the time came. Know something? I actually made it. We went to Japan to play the Japanese All-Stars. I thought Americans were crazy about baseball, but they've got nothing on the Japanese. They love the game, and there we were. Just like big leaguers, uniforms and all. Play ball. Hey, a little rhubarb. Just like flappers. During the game, when I was on the bench, I kept remembering that when I entered the Army, I thought there'd be no more baseball. Well, if it was baseball I wanted, I was getting plenty. To make an Army team, you've got to be good. First, you get in a little sandlot game with the fellas. Before you're selected to play against Navy or Air Force teams, or teams like the Japanese All-Stars, you've competed with every potential athlete in the command. If you can just get a football in their hands, half of an army coach's job is done. Generally, I let them organize choose-up games among themselves, play touch ball. Maybe some of them remember movements and techniques from their school days. Crude, primitive, but sometimes very effective plays. And you can see the talent. Then it's important not to frustrate it. All of them must have a chance to play. And once they're interested, it's important they get a chance to learn more. You've got to separate the talent, set up squads and games that allow the men to test themselves against their normal competitors. What starts out behind the barracks with a football signed out from company supply soon comes to a game like this one, the season's opener in the city of Pusan, Korea. It took some doing, but it had a big game atmosphere. All the football trimmings we could lay our hands on, line markers, bleachers, and band. Get those uniforms. Pretty colorful, eh? But you'd be surprised what they meant in terms of morale. The morale you could see in the hard, clean line play. The fairly good kicking. Somebody won that game, but I can't remember who. I was there picking men from both sides for the command-wide varsity. After that, I was sent to school again, a football clinic where the Army makes sure its coaches will give their teams up-to-date instruction, where the coaches get coached. Brush up that quarterback take from the tee, gentlemen. And make sure the handoff to the fullback is smooth, like this. Then they run a play with the best available tee formation backfield. They run it once, they run it twice, they run it three times, and then the variations. Then play after play in chalk, like this. End cuts over here. Tackle takes this man. Guard gets his. 
center charges a secondary. Guard gets a man. Tackle charges a secondary. End knocks out the safety. Right half leading the interference. Fullback moves out in front and mops up. And left half carries the ball wide around end for a touchdown. Key to the play is a smart fake from the quarterback to full, who sucks in the Rovers. Fine. Then the pass plays. Every coach there is thinking, if I only had a quarterback like that. Because there's a team in your future, and a game. The kind of game that stimulates the sports interest of every soldier in the command. That gives them something to root for. A big day, a big game, in a big stadium. My day, my team's day, came in Japan. All the pomp and splendor of an intercollegiate Saturday classic. When they trotted on the field, the other team looked confident, aggressive, proud, and heavier. Would take a pretty sharp outfit to beat them. But that wasn't the important thing. My men and all the men they had bucked and pushed against to get here were better soldiers for it. And the men watching would be better for it, too. We won the toss. Turned out we could pass. Now watch this one, Sonny. It turned out they could run, mount an attack. They had a team after all. Beautiful, but slippery. Too bad for us. It turned out they could take it, too. That's a spree, as they say in France, or moxie, as they say in Toledo. But we had it, too. And a lucky break. And it was seven points in our favor. We had plenty of support. And we could run, too, all the way. And kick. We had a football team. We had a basketball team, but it wasn't much good until the Major decided to show us a few things. Like how to guard your man and rattle him. And how to fake and pass. We won the post championship. Funny thing, the whole time I never even got tired. A few of us wound up playing for the command. There I was on a new court, working for a real coach who never let up. All right, sharpen up the handoff out of the slot. Don't flub the setups. Oops. And limber up. Through the legs and pass. Through the legs and pass. I was ready to volunteer for a field problem. Dribble out and pass. Dribble out and pass. Not sharp enough, not fast enough. Do it easy. Keep it in motion as you move. Or you'll foul out. Or you'll lose the ball. Funny thing, he was right. And little by little, I got my win back. I rounded into shape for the first time since I came into service. And we started making nine out of every 10 setups. Nice, real clean. And now watch our free throw artist. One. Two, three. We're at the Army-wide championships, just as easy as that. But this was the test. 
on a strange court against a top-notch opponent. They knew how to move that ball, not as flashy as our coach had made us, but with lots of power. But we were feeling great, in great shape. Maybe you won't believe it, but I think playing basketball made a better soldier out of me. The Army is making a skier out of me. Yes, if you're going to talk about Army sports, you should mention the terrific opportunity to ski in Germany, not to mention the scenery. That happens to be a genuine Alp, or part of one. And this is one of the Army's own ski resorts. It's particularly terrific for guys like me who've always been interested in winter sports but never been near snow. I guess snow is pretty much a prerequisite if you're going to do any skiing. Nice place and nice company, huh? Once you check in, the next step is to check out ski clothes and skis. They're right there, provided for your convenience by your host, the U.S. Army. Say, we're just in time to see something happen. Let's stick around and find out what it is. Hey, it's a slalom race. Well, I'm not too good yet, but I'm entering for the experience. The starter gives a signal and away we go. You see, you have to go between the path of the poles all the way down to the bottom. The man who does it the fastest wins. Here I go. Nice, very nice. Graceful, very graceful. May I remind you that this expert exhibition of extraordinary skiing comes to you through the courtesy of the U.S. Army Sports Program. Skiing like this is a real inspiration to a beginner. It looks so easy. It won't take a second and I'll be back on my feet. Why am I so clumsy? Well, I see I'm not alone. That's a long way to fall. At least I pick my spot. I suppose if you want to stay in shape, this is as good a way as any. But what shape? Back to the race. Whoop, and he was doing so well. That's better. Up, up, sedaisy. How'd he get way down there? These are the winners. In every sport, at every competitive level, the Army sponsors trophies or medals to increase a man's incentive to get out there and do his best. Well, since I can't win the slalom, maybe I can try for... Dig that crazy hill. On second thought, uh-uh. I'll just watch if you don't mind. I guess that's why they call this a relaxing sport.
Still, I bet there's a lot of satisfaction in taking off and landing down there right side up. I'll do it yet. You see, the Army gives lessons up here for us beginners. And next year... That's what I thought, watching those guys splashing in the pool. Maybe next year I'll know how to swim. Get over being afraid of the water. A buddy of mine had written about the Olympic indoor pool they have in Berlin. They taught him to dive like a champion there. Well, it wasn't any Olympic pool. But that summer, after duty hours, they held swimming and life-saving classes. The coach knew just how to do it, get you to feeling at home in the water. All right, now, get those arms up. One, two, three, kick. Six months later, in Korea, I swam anchor man in the water relay. The winner, boy, what a feeling. Not much of a race, just intramural. But it's nice to win. With me, it was the gloves. I don't know if you can understand that. I like the way they looked. Kind of peaceful in comparison with the M1s and grenades and bazookas that we'd had for company. They reminded me of home. The fights I'd watched on TV. Well, anyway, I volunteered. I needed the exercise. That was boxing, that was footwork, but we had fun cuffing each other around. Anyway, that's how it started. When I got to my next post, I turned out for boxing. I got some lessons. Left, 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 right. Left, 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 right. Now all of you, get your shoulders into it. Keep that guard up and hook and jab. Okay, let's pair off. Get in the ring and spar. All of us were waiting for the night when there would be only two boxers to pair off. You and another guy. You get in the ring and round one. Over fast, wasn't it? Yeah, fortunately, that isn't me. No, I was eliminated long ago. This is the annual inter-service boxing tournament, the culmination of all the shadow boxing, all the work on the light and heavy bags, the sparring, the road work. Once a year, all the men who have survived the elimination tournaments in all the services meet to finish the job, like this. Some night, isn't it? And the Army's really been rolling along. Now here come two top-notch light heavyweights, one from the Army and one from the Air Force. One more win tonight, and a championship trophy will belong to the Army. So come on, Army! Watch this Army man. He's dangerous. He works his man into the ropes. And look at him go! Round three coming up. Round two was a bit slow, but everybody's watching for Army to complete its mission in the next stanza. Come on, Army. Oh, but this boy doesn't need any encouragement. The end? No, the beginning of the end. Air Force back on his feet. And they're trading punches again. Not a fair trade. Army's attack is sharp and hard. The Air Force man's punch has lost its power. Whoa.
Whoops, a slip, and he's up again. A game fighter, this fella. Oh, but he's in trouble. Rubber-legged, glassy-eyed. Hey, I think it's all over. It is. Army wins by a TKO. Mission accomplished. I'm telling you, next year, I'm gonna be on that squad when they're giving out the medals. In the beginning, we said the one thing every athlete has in common with every soldier is the rugged training, the hard work. But there's more. There's the thrill of winning. In the ring, on the diamond, on the gridiron, in the field. Winning and hard work go together. Every athlete knows it. Every American soldier knows it. Perhaps none of the men you've just seen will ever be named on anybody's All-American. But every one of them is part of a truly All-American team. Your Army. Now, this is Sergeant Stuart Queen, inviting you to be with us next week when we'll bring you another story on The Big Picture. The Big Picture is a weekly television report to the nation on the activities of the Army at home and overseas. Produced by the Signal Corps Pictorial Center. Presented by the U.S. Army in cooperation with this station. You can be an important part of the Big Picture. You can proudly serve with the best equipped, the best trained, the best fighting team in the world today, the United States Army.